This is Mark Tobias with uh, Siba de, Go- de Boer, de Boer, de Boer yes. uh, on the bridge of the Rotterdam, and we're going to visit for a little while about what you do and how you do it. Yes. Um, nobody ever gets to see this view, uh-huh. and uh, so this should be of real interest for everybody that uh, is cruising. Um, how long have you been a captain, and how long have you been with Holland America? Well, I've been uh, with Holland America Line for 17 years, and uh, I've been a captain for about six years now. Yes. And, and what education is required to qualify as a captain? Uh, nautical College, yes. And, so, and are you an engineer by trade? Uh, I'm No, I'm a uh, navigator by trade, of course, but, uh, you know, I, I, I did uh, a course, a four-year program in the Netherlands, and uh, giving you a Bachelor of Science degree, uh, and I did the navigation in the Netherlands. So you actually still know how to use a sextant? Yes, that's uh, <laughs> with all the GPS. Definitely, I did. I did that uh, in the, in the, on, the, on cargo ships that I sailed on. We still used, uh, of course, the, uh, the sextant in the beginning, but uh, it has, uh, of course, uh, yeah, changed uh, recently. But still, our apprentices are doing uh, getting sites with the sextant, and I think it should be going on. Uh, for all this because it's nice that they get this, uh, this knowledge, you know. Well, if you lose all your electronics, including GPS, yes. is there any other way to navigate? Yeah, well, we would navigate uh, that way. It depends where you are, of course. You can always uh, navigate by radar and uh, distances and, uh, and so on, and, right. uh, by lower and sea. But uh, it is, uh, it is uh, when you're on a crossing, yeah, you have to use uh, uh, other means of navigation. Is lower and sea still in use? We don't. I thought they don't, discontinued yeah, using we, it. Yeah, we did, we don't use it anymore. We had it on the old S class uh, ship still, but it has been uh, phased out. Yes. And this is an R class ship. This is an R class ship. Which and what's how, what are the classifications? What are the, what does R class actually mean? R class means the Rotterdam class, and uh, the Rotterdam, the MS Rotterdam, is the first out of our R class series. So the Rotterdam class. So is it a, it's a size and weight size class and weight. classification? Yeah, that's correct. And what's the maximum speed that this ship can attain? Well, this ship is, ship is very special. It was built for uh, longer itineraries around the world. This ship is very high powered. It has five uh, 16-cylinder engines. It's very powerful and can go up to 25 knots. And a knot is 1.18? It's uh, 1.15 statute mile. 1.15. Yes. And one uh, one uh, nautical mile is uh, 1,852 meters. Right. Yes. We were speaking earlier. Uh, maybe a naive question. I'm sure everybody would like to know what's the difference, fundamental difference now in ship design between, let's say, the Titanic in 1915, which was the ship yes. of the era, and today. Well, ships are much uh, lighter built nowadays. Uh, uh, ships are welded nowadays. Uh, lighter built, higher tensile steel is being used, so they are wider nowadays because they're not uh, built as much for speed, but much more for comfort mm-hmm. uh, nowadays. Doesn't mean that they are less good or less safe ships. It means just that it's a different different uh, design. It means that you have to uh, on crossings in heavy weather, you have to uh, really uh, be uh, looking for. Uh, not not to overstress the vessel, and we have a lot of tools to, to determine that. Yeah, we talked earlier. This is it's really, although we're running on autopilot. Yes. You do take manual control of the ship in weather, and yes. you do have sophisticated instrumentation now to measure stresses. Yes. On the ship. Yes. It, how critical does this become? Uh, it is it is very critical. You must at all. Uh, uh, time know what the weight of distribution is uh, within the ship, so we have uh, a lot of uh, uh, measurement, means of measurement, measuring uh, the uh, weight inside the vessel. Uh, we can uh, uh, determine uh, the stresses, we can determine the, the, the torsion, we can, uh, if this bending or uh, this, uh, uh, this uh, uh, hogging or sagging, uh, we have all these means uh, in our stability programs. And we must make sure that we are staying uh, well under 100% uh, at mm-hmm. any time. You can imagine uh, with uh, with uh, different uh, weather circumstances, yeah, we have to make sure that that the uh, uh, the ship stays at all times uh, within safe uh, mm-hmm. stress limits. And yes. and not make the passengers unsafe or no. rough. And what happens when you have really rough seas? You slow down. 
we slow down. That's the first thing, yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. You don't want to overstress the vessel. Uh, like I mentioned, uh, uh, the, the energy of the waves has to dissipate somewhere, and uh, you don't want uh, it to dissipate in such a way that uh, the vessel gets overstressed in structure. So you must mm -hmm. make sure that you slow down and uh, keep the ship on, an, uh, on a favorable heading uh, in relation to the waves uh, to make sure that uh, the stresses are uh, staying within, uh, staying within the ship. And I'm assuming there's all kinds of computer monitoring now to That's analyze right. those different stresses so you get an overall picture of where you're at. Yes, yes, you have that. And have storms and heavy waves, what do you do and to minimize the effect on the ship and the passengers and the stabilizers. How do you control those and how do those work? Stabilizers are basically small uh, aircraft wings. They uh, are uh, approximately at the midship, about uh, the six meter draft uh, level approximately. They are rotating and like an aircraft wing, uh, when the angle of attack is changing, the angle of which they are exposed to the water flow, you get an, up, an upward, upward motion. So when the ship is rolling to one side, uh, the, the low side, uh, the, the, uh, the low side wing will create a lift and bring the ship in, back in its upright position. And this is a continuous process, which is uh, gyroscopically driven. Um, have you ever run into ice? Uh, ice. Uh, I have been in ice conditions. Yes, in Antarctica, uh, we've been in ice. But normally, uh, uh, in those ice fields, we don't go uh, at the mm -hmm. uh, during the night time. We are in the ice fields during the day, so that we have a good view on the ice. Stay away from it. Mm -hmm. And during the night time, we are going out of the ice con ice conditions and uh, just uh, stay off the ice uh, range uh, as much as much as possible. Mm -hmm. And during the day, we would go in again. In Alaska, of course, we have been in ice yeah. conditions, but not not in major thick ice now. If a ship today hit an, shaved an iceberg like the Titanic, yes. would there be the same result likely? Or and, uh, is it compartmentalized now to the point that, and no rivets rather than well, welding? No rivets, uh, but uh, yeah, sideways, uh, it's, 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 it, uh, if, like on the Titanic, the ship was completely ripped open from the, uh, from the side. Right. It was in a very, a very uh, unfortunate uh, situation. These ships are uh, designed such that they can handle they can handle a lot. Mm -hmm. like that. What's the global? Is there a global network for rescue? If you get into trouble, uh, and like I've crossed the Atlantic a couple yes. times, if we get into trouble and you either lose power, or you lose electronics, something yes. you have a fire, is there a global rescue network that? Because everybody wants to know what happens if you really get into trouble in the middle of an ocean. Yes. Now we have, we're always in contact of course, uh, we, we send out uh, our reports, we have a GMDSS uh, system what? and there's a global, there's a global uh, search and rescue operation, uh, mm -hmm. we are in contact with them continuously, you know, so uh, passenger ships uh, are, are in continuous uh, contact with, uh, with organizations ashore to mm -hmm. make sure that they know where we are. And one of the systems that we are using is uh, the Amber system. This is a very well-known system, United States-based. Uh, they keep track not only of us, but also uh, uh, they keep track of ships surrounding us. So uh, freighters as well. Freighters as well. Yeah. So if if we need the immediate help as a passenger ship, then uh, you know they can direct other ships to us to mm -hmm. help out. If we are out of range of helicopters or uh, or, uh, or or such, you know, and most of the times in mid-ocean you are out of helicopter range. Do you know the position of ships around you? Is that information constantly fed to all of your bridges, or you don't? Well, you know, nowadays with uh, with uh, AIS system, eh? what's AIS? Automated identification system. Okay. Oh uh, yes. We have uh, we can see way more ships than we used to do. So uh, we have a pretty good picture of what what is around us. Yes. So is this like the transponder system on aircraft? Correct. Uh, is a squawk ident code. Squawk same ident thing. Yes. Same same way. Same. Uh, so same you get on your radar. Yes. Same thing. Yes. We get uh, on our radars. We get uh, uh, well. We have the normal. Uh, uh, we call it ARPA targets that are plotted by the radar itself. But we also get the AIS uh, uh, AIS information on top of it. So we have a lot of information to our availability at the same time. And I'm assuming that pirates don't have AIS. 
I presume that I presume <laughs> that as well. Uh, looking at their tactics, they don't they don't have it. But uh, sometimes uh, when you read in the news, it's surprising of detailed information they have about cargoes, etc. You know, so they're pretty selective. Well, my mother was on the Prince and Dom, yes. uh, as I was mentioning, out of Cape Town yes. uh, four years ago. Heading to Lisbon on the east coast of Africa, and they, the ship was being shattered by pirates. Yes. And so there, I believe your Dutch uh, military came down yes. to make sure the ship was all right. Yeah, we had one ship deployed there. That's correct. Yeah. Uh, yes. And so uh, she thought it was actually very exciting. Yes. And there, was some, uh, there was some great footage and pictures of, of that. Situation. <laughs> yeah. She would call me on my satellite phone and tell me about all the lights being turned off on the on the deck, right. so it looked like a freighter. Yes. What's the most urgent problem you've you've faced in your career on? Well, I think on, I on think I think fire. That is mm -hmm. the most the most challenging. Fires are just uh, just dangerous on ships. Mm -hmm. But uh, fortunately, we have uh, we have a wonderful system in place nowadays uh, to to attack fires. Mm -hmm. And that with uh, with a very uh, very uh, thorough training uh, makes sure that we. Uh, you had one situation. Yeah, with the coffee yes. pot in the uh, Lido. The response was excellent, very quick, you yeah. know, and uh, everybody knows what, what uh, they have to do, by a lot. But uh, it is, uh, it is, uh, it is. Uh, we have a wonderful system of, uh, of uh, smoke detectors throughout the mm -hmm. vessel. Uh, those those smoke detectors not only read smoke, but they also can measure temperatures. So right. we have a lot of means. So they're radar rise detectors uh, also. Uh, yes, yeah. and uh, we have a wonderful overview right away. We have a tech plans in place, so normally we can uh, deal with it uh, very mm -hmm. well. What's your response time average? Uh, One response, minute. Uh, response time depends on the location. Yeah, of, the ship, of course. Uh, if you have to go all the way to the aft ship, but this right. little bit. But we have a system in place where we have first responders rushing with the minimum equipment uh, right. to the scene, giving the assessment, and then uh, depending on uh, if you have if you have multiple smoke alarms, then we go straight yeah, right. uh, raise the alarm. But if it is an, uh, one Isolated, alarm, right. so like like we have right now, we send somebody there to check it to out to confirm and report back. The response time can be can be very very rapid. Why do you need pilots? Uh, when we were in the Amazon in November, yes. and actually I think you had pilots in maybe Stockholm. Yes. W w is that because they know the terrain better than you do? Correct. They uh, are. Uh, they are. They know the uh, the terrain very well. They know the area very well. They know the the, the seabed very well, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And they help you guide uh, the ship through uh, through a uh, difficult area. Mm -hmm. Sailing through the Stockholm archipelago is not so easy. Uh, as I could see, yeah. A lot of major turns. Yeah. Uh, you saw the proximity to the land uh, at certain times of the passage. So, you know, it is uh, it is great to have uh, experienced pilots uh, help you out. Right. But, but you must have a large or a long lag time between when you turn the ship and when it actually responds. No, not, not really. This is a twin, uh, twin uh, rudder ship. Uh, you have a lot of pressure on the brothers. It, it rotates very quickly. Oh, it does. Yeah. You, you know, uh, you can imagine that when you sail on, uh, on, on, on a big tanker, uh, before a big tanker starts turning, you know, it takes quite, oh, yeah. quite a while. And there is this wheel over point, and when it starts actually turning. But here, it is almost immediate, depending on the speed that you're doing. Right. If you're a passenger booking a trip, yes. where do you want to be on the ship as far as your stateroom? It depends. And on this ship, uh, we have wonderful balconies on deck number six and deck number seven. So you know, uh, if you want to look for a nice balcony, uh, I would say uh, uh, anywhere on those decks. But uh, talking about mov movement, you talk about uh, lower decks, uh, possibly uh, le less exposure to movement. You're lower in the ship. And uh, uh, midship, I would say. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. This is where I always book because there's, it seems to be yeah. the smoothest. Yeah. Yes. And these have been very smooth waters. Yes. Uh, uncharacteristically to me. Yeah. Um, smooth. Um, how often, how much time do you spend on the bridge? Are you here most of the time or you this don't have to this, be? This itinerary, I spend a lot of hours on the bridge because, uh, you know, it is uh, uh, a lot of traffic. Uh, mm -hmm. A lot of turns, uh, you know. Great Belt is uh, very busy with traffic, so I must be here uh, quite uh, quite some time. Uh, so after the Stockholm, for example, I spent uh, four and a half hours on the bridge, and also in the morning four and a half mm -hmm. hours. So I was already nine hours on the bridge, uh, and then of course the daily uh, the daily work is there. Yeah. Once the ship is alongside. If if, and if you lose all your navigation, yes, then you still can do the old sextant. 
Yes, but uh, <laughs> depends. Hey, you have to hear the talk about coastal navigation. Coastal navigation is of course always possible. Right. But uh, yeah, on, uh, on at the middle of the ocean, you can still do the our sightings. Yes. Mm -hmm. And what if you have power failure? Total power failure. What kind of backup do you have? I know you have generators. Yeah. For how long? Well, a but, day. Uh, you know, the, they, we have we have an emergency generator, of course, that is fed uh, fed uh, feeding our emergency system. That is, uh, as long as it has fuel, it can run. You know, so right. It is, uh, uh, but you know, there is a lot of redundancy also in the engine mm -hmm. room itself. And eh? you have uh, basically separate uh, separate engine rooms. Uh, uh, two engines are uh, forward, three engines are in the aft and uh, half part of the ship and uh, there is redundancy in that way mm -hmm. as well. So there is separation of the main switchboard and you have still uh, power under normal, under normal, normal circumstances. Holland America has won awards as far as protecting the environment. Yes. Could you very quickly address what, what sets you apart as far as how you handle trash, water processing, everything that goes into how a ship impacts yes. the environment. Well, I think uh, Holland America Line has from the beginning, you know, they have been the industry leader when it comes to, uh, to, to taking care of the environment and taking care of the waters through which we sail. So, you know, they have uh, been uh, instrumental putting state-of-the-art waste uh, management systems on board the vessel. Uh, Holland America Line was the first cruise line that started with the Xenon system, you know, uh, uh, taking care of our grey and black water requirements and putting almost clean water back into the, uh, into the ocean. I mean, we are cleaner than uh, a lot of the shoreside uh, facilities. Operating in Alaska, you can imagine mm -hmm. that, uh, you know, it's, it's to very high standards that we are operating. Mm -hmm. yeah. Depending, uh, we have set our goals very high. Uh, recycling is a big, uh, big mm -hmm. issue, of course. We try to recycle as much glass and aluminium that, uh, mm -hmm. as we can by offloading it in, in ports. Uh, in Europe, operating in Europe, it's wonderful. You can, uh, in uh, Stockholm and in Helsinki, you can hook up to the local uh, water grid, wastewater grid, and you can just pump it uh, into, oh, the, really? into their system for free. So you know that is that that is wonderful. Right. Uh, of course, we have a lot of holding capacity as well. Uh, St. Petersburg, for example, does not have any uh, facility. So normally we are used to pump it out in barges, but this time we were able to uh, keep it all on board. Good money saver as well. Uh, and uh, we have been fully compliant with, uh, of course, Marpol at, at any time. So uh, in doing more in, in many cases than is required. Do you foresee cruise ships taking water out of the ocean and processing it for drinking water at That's some point? Do. You do do that? We do all the time. We do it in, in, in several ways. Uh, we do a reverse osmosis. That is uh, well, a rather new system. Uh, it's a wonderful system because you don't have to heat the water to do this. Uh, it saves a lot of fuel. Uh, but uh, yeah, we are using our evaporator all the mm -hmm. time to make uh, uh, fresh water. Last question. What happens if somebody falls overboard? Yeah, falls overboard, we have a man overboard procedure. Uh, you know, uh, so what happens, somebody falls overboard and we get a report on the bridge, of course, that's critical. Yeah. Uh, what, we, what we do, we uh, put uh, boys over the side right away. Uh, normally two so you can mark it. Two markers, two right. markers normally on both sides. And uh, we, uh, we stop the ship and, uh, and uh, we can stop the ship very rapidly and uh, look for the, for the person that went overboard. Yes. It, are, are your ships, I was on one of your ships and there was an engineer that was testing man overboard system yes. with the uh, very super high frequency radar coupled with GPS. Is this going to become standard on cruise ships, do you think? I think so. You know, these systems are becoming more, uh, I mean, there's quite some, uh, some uh, occasions where people fell overboard nowadays. And, uh, or pushed. Or pushed overboard, yeah. that has also happened. Uh, but uh, you know, I think these systems will get more, more and more sophisticated mm -hmm. as uh, years pass by. Mm -hmm. So, can we take a tour of the bridge? Yes, we can. Absolutely.